Hi everybody, so this is going to be a parting, particle tracking tutorial. So what we're going to do is watch particles go into a little elbow shaped bend, get caught on a wall, and we're going to actually be able to count how many particles end up on the wall. And I'll also show you how to actually get statistics of where the particles are. So we're going to do 3D just to show the full extent of everything. We're going to add particle tracking. We're going to add laminar flow. And we're going to add time dependent. And we're going to click the little race flag. Okay. So our geometry is just going to be a cylinder of 0.025. Oops. Probably shouldn't use a comma. Commas are bad. Um, a height of 0.1. So we're going to build this cylinder. Okay. Uh, now we're going to add a sphere. It's going to have a radius of 0.06. And it's going to be located at 0.1. So if I build that. Okay. So there's my sphere. And I'm going to throw in a cylinder with a bend. So I'm going to copy the same cylinder dimensions. I'm going to change the orientation of its axis. And you're going to notice it's in the wrong spot. So I need to move this up to here. And so all I'm going to do is move it to 0.1. And we have a nice bend. Okay. So before doing that, I want to combine everything. So I'm going to select all three geometries. And I have one nice geometry. Oops. Oops. And if I get rid of that, keep interior boundaries, that all goes away. And I have fewer boundaries to deal with. And it looks nicer. Looks like an old toy. Um, materials. I'm just going to look at particles in water. So I'm going to open Material Browser. Material. I'm going to add water. And I'm just going to add it to everything. So my water covers in all domains. That's my fluid properties. Okay, so let's just do fluid flow real quick first. We're actually going to do steady state, but I'll change that in a second. I'm just going to zoom in compressible. To make things simple, we'll neglect inertial flow. Um, and then we need to specify an inlet. And we're going to do 0 0.001. And we're going to do an outlet over here and that's just going to be pressure zero. So we have all this. Fluid properties, we don't need to specify anything. We're just going to say from material. And initial values we don't need to specify. Okay. Let's set up our particle tracking real quick. So for particle properties, I'm just going to use 1500. Completely arbitrary. And particle diameter, 10 microns. No big. Um, so the force I'm going to say, drag force, one thing to specify is the velocity field that's acting on the particle is calculated from your creep flow or your fluid flow. Viscosity from material. If you had um, turbulence, you would get it here. Okay. And I'm also going to add gravity force. And so gravity from material, all good, all good. Okay. So now I need to specify an inlet. To make this really, really simple, we're just going to do 10 particles. So we're going to say density, 10 particles. And the inlet velocity is a function of this creep flow. Okay. And on the outlet of particles, we're just going to say they freeze. We actually want to count how many get there, so we're not going to say disappear. Okay. So we have everything set up. Now the easiest way to do this is actually to do two studies. Ah. We're just getting another time dependent. Keep things simple. So I'm going to get rid of this time dependent in study one. And I'm actually going to do stationary. Why stationary? Because I'm just going to calculate the creep flow. Nothing else. 
So we do free tetrahedral, size, normal, build. Okay. So I'm going to let this solve real quick. And then I'm going to come back and continue on setting up the time dependent study for the particle tracking. So I'm going to click confirm. And just before I go, make sure everything's okay. That way you guys know. Okay, so that's going to all the equations. Uh, checking the solver. Okay, now it's going to be stepping. So I'm going to pause this and come back in a second. Here we go. Okay, so that was really fast and I probably didn't need to leave. So now what we have is a blow dryer. I mean, it's kind of cool, right? You can actually see the velocity come in, you can come out. So this mesh is not actually converged, so I urge you to actually do a finer mesh, but this is just for the tutorial. So one thing in doing a mesh convergence is you can actually just look at the surface plot, and you can obviously, this should be more parabolic and smoother and less jaggedy, because you, actually, you can actually see the elements having an effect on the velocity profile. But regardless, now we're going to do the model for particle tracking. And we're not actually going to calculate the creep flow now. And since we're not, we're going to actually have to tell it, take the value for the velocity profile from the solution from study one and just do automatic. So what's going to do is use the velocity profile from our study one and use that to do the particle tracking. So I'm going to click this compute. It's going to run. And before I hang up this time and pause it, I'm going to see how fast it runs. So it's really fast and I don't need to actually leave. So tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Okay. Great. Okay. So we, we had 10 part. Let's actually watch the particles. Because this is always fun. So what we're looking at is we have 10 particles. Pretty, aren't they? Okay. 30 seconds in. They've gone up a little bit. If you have more particles, it's actually really pretty. They go up into the shell. And then they eventually end up sticking to this wall because we specified freeze. So at 470 seconds, we have six particles. Okay. So a lot of groups actually want to calculate the particles on the surface. How do we do this? So you're going to come down to data sets here. And you're going to come down to your particle. And you're going to specify add selection. Now once you do this, anytime you specify look at particle one, you're only going to be looking at the particles on this one selection. So usually it's best to actually make two data sets, one for particle and one for particle with a specific selection. So that way you can actually make sure you're looking at all the particles. This one looks at all the particles. This one looks at only the particles on this selection. And we're going to choose the outlet boundary. So now we're going to come down to drive values and we're going to look at global evaluation. So we're going to click on this. We're going to come down to particle one because that only looks at that surface. And what we want to do is we want to look at particle statistics and the total number of particles in this selection. Okay. So if I click evaluate, what I'm going to see is actually a table that's a function of time. So if I go to 180 seconds, I should see zero particles on that wall. So let's go up to 180, plot. Oh, and guess what? I'm looking at particle one. When I really should be looking at particle two, because I want to look at all the particles. Ah. Um. So they have a slight difficulty. Solve one. Oh, so our particle two should actually be solver two. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Fascinating. Uh, oh. Plot. Ah. Uh, plot one particle trajectories. One second. As I fix this. Duck, duck, duck. Mm, so, oh, okay. So we need all these to match. And so I think that should cover everything. 
plot. Ah, no particles. No worries. From parent plot. No particles. Oh, and we need this one right here. Ah, sorry. There we go. All fixed. This is what happens when you do a tutorial online. And we have particles. Okay. So we're going to go back to what we were doing. And we're going to go to 180 seconds. And what do we see? Note, we see all 10 particles not touching that surface. But if I go to 190, what happens? I have one particle on that surface. And if I go back to this table, 191. So if I go to 290, oops, 290, I can't obviously count. 290, I should see four part, wait, oops. I believe that's three, so let's zoom in. And we see three particles at 290. And what do we see on our table? 290, three particles, and about a fourth is about to hit. So that is actually how you look at the particles on the table. Now let's say you actually want this table of time versus number of particles on that boundary. You could just click export right here. You can go to desktop and you can save it. Okay? And don't forget to click export. Okay. Now let's say I actually want all the particle positions, all 10 particles. What I can actually do is come back to this plot and I can click I can click on this particle trajectories and I can add plot data to export browse desktop and I'm just gonna say um, positions and I'm gonna click export and what I should be able to see in this file is all 10 particles positions and their velocities as that is the color expression that I've chosen. So if I come to positions right here, oops, never use text. Use note, notepad plus plus. So I have 10 particles and I have their x, y, x, y, z position, their color, and their radius. So I get information. So this gives me their velocity and this gives me x and y. So that is essentially all you need to do for particle tracing where if you want to actually look at the total number of particles on a boundary. And just so you don't look a fool on your next video when you try to copy me, make sure your two solutions match. So particle one and particle two. Okay? And whenever I look at particle one, I'm only going to be looking at those particles touching that surface. Okay? And if, you, if you're more interested in more details about the number of particles, you can also look at other particle statistics. Particle index, release feature waste time, yada, yada, yada. Okay? I hope that has been a useful tutorial where we study essentially particles in a blow dryer. I think it's a cool picture. So I hope this was useful and that is all.